Hello, I'm Kimberly, and welcome to the weekend edition of the Native News Update. It's Friday, December 28th, and many of the stories you hear here can be found at IndianCountryNews.com. And here's the news for the day from the Associated Press and other Native News sources. A 73-year-old from Wabashgung First Nation has written a letter to the media stating she's running out of time and options to address mercury poisoning in her community. Betty Rifle said Wabashgung experienced the same contamination as Grassy Narrows, but unlike its downstream neighbors, the community has received neither recognition or compensation. Mercury contamination from a dried-in paper mill was discovered in the English Wabagoon River system in 1970, contamination that had allegedly been there for years. Rifle said her brother died as a baby when they were living along the river. She said she believes he died, as did many other infants, as a result of being poisoned by mercury. A Mercury Disability Compensation Board, which was established in 1986 by the Canadian government, provides support for people at nearby Grassy Narrows and Wabashgung First Nations, yet the province says Wabashgung is not part of the Compensation Board because it is located on a separate watershed. At Wabascot Chief Teresa Spence gained an unexpected and passionately outspoken ally as a former Lieutenant Governor of Ontario, James Bartleman, who is a member of the Chippewas of Rama First Nation, called on Prime Minister Stephen Harper to show that he's a leader and meet with Chief Spence as she enters the third week of her hunger strike. Chief Spence has been on a hunger strike since December 11th to focus public attention on the Aboriginal issues and has been living in a teepee on Victoria Island in the Ottawa River that many Aboriginals consider to be sacred land. She is seeking a meeting with the Prime Minister, Stephen Harper, the Governor General and the First Nation leaders to discuss the government's relationship with First Nations. Well, my name is uh, uh, Teresa Spence, Chief of Ottawa, Biscuit, and uh, my Spiritual name is uh, She Who Carries the Truth. Well, I grew up in uh, the railway. Uh, my stepdad used to work on the, on the tracks there. It's between uh, Morsini and Cochrane. It's called Ka Outer Rapids, which is three miles away from there. So I was raised there, and uh, you know we had a we had a good life. It was peaceful, and uh, we were never bored. Like you know. From sunrise to sunset, we were always occupied in doing chores and uh, doing things with the land, like going chopping and um, snaring rabbits. So it was a it was a life that I, I really uh, tra uh, enjoy until I went to a resident school when I was six years old. I was um, always uh, feel alone and not loved. Hard. This year, you carrying the pain, what we've been carrying so many years. And, um, and as a woman, I feel that pain. Like, when you're a woman, when you have that pain, it goes all over your body and your heart. And it's, it's so much that you can't take no more. And uh, I don't know, it's just the pain that's really uh, too heavy. He's dishonoring or the treaty, the purpose of the treaty, you know, the spirit of the treaty. And um, these these days, he doesn't even recognize our leaders as uh, leaders. You just see them as, as a person. But we can, uh, we First Nation, all, always respected him, and we always honored him as a prime minister, even the crown. And then and it is time for the both federal governments to treat treat us uh, equal, equal. You know, like to build up our, our community and uh, infrastructure and let us be. Like, it is the leadership's responsibility to plan for their children's future. Not the prime minister, not even the crown. You know, like, it's time for, um, for everybody to work together. That means the government too. And, uh, and to uh, treat, uh, treat us with respect and honor. Even that treaty, that was the purpose of that treaty, is to go in peace and, and honor each other and respect each other and um, fly together with, uh, with the future, not to go separate ways. And this is what's been happening with the government. He's not listening or honoring our leadership.
Spence's hunger strike helped spark the National Idle No More movement, which was started by Sheila McLean, Nina Wilson, Sylvia McAdam, and Jessica Gordon, in response to the Canadian bill C-45. Bartleman hopes that Spence's hunger strike and the Idle No More movement will go beyond a piece of legislation in the House of Commons. I've long said that Native people are the invisible people, and Native children in particular are the invisible children of the Canadian society, Bartleman said. What we need to do is raise the consciousness of the public and raise the consciousness of the Canadian cabinet that these are real people and they suffer. In solidarity with Chief Teresa Spence and the Idle No More campaign, hunger strikes and flash mob round dance movements continue to spread, not only across Canada, but also the United States and around the world. The Canadian government continues to encourage Spence to stop her hunger strike and to meet with John Duncan, Minister of Aboriginal Affairs. But Spence rejects that offer because she believes Duncan isn't the one who should be speaking on a nation-to-nation -nation basis. In a statement released December 28th, Spence said she remains hopeful that Harper or Governor General David Johnston will accept her request. if a flash mob round dance is happening near you or if you're interested in starting one and showing support, you can visit idlenomore.com. And to keep up with Chief Teresa Spence, you can follow her on Twitter at Chief Teresa. A Montana State University and Little Bighorn College program to train Native American educators has received a four-year, $1.2 million federal grant. The Department of Education grant will provide funding for 40 students in Indian Leadership Education and Development Program throughout Montana, South Dakota, North Dakota, and Wyoming. The program is designed to train Native American educators on reservations, plus it allows them to earn a master's degree in school administration without having to leave their jobs. Program Administrator Bill Ruff says it's meant to help underperforming schools improve. He says the high turnover among school teachers on reservations can be alleviated by training educators who already work in those communities. Speculations about the origins and age of a dugout canoe found in November 1957 at the bottom of Big Swan Lake in Minnesota have finally come to an end after carbon testing was recently completed on the relic. A firm in Florida completed the carbon testing of the canoe, which is now on display at the McLeod County Historical Museum in Hutchinson, Minnesota. Testing showed the canoe was much older than previously thought to be, which was about 150 to 250 years old. 
The carbon testing dated the 14-foot white oak dugout to be built between 1030 and 1220 A.D., making it closer to 800 years old. The museum will be publishing a booklet in 2013 about the dugout and other artifacts as well as showcasing them in their displays. Members of the Mayan ethnics from Yucatan, Chiapas, and Guatemala launched the website Live in the Mayan Time, Sun, Corn, and Calendar, which aims to provide teachers and high school students with content in Maya astronomy and mathematics. In the framework of the Maya Culture Festival 2012, the director of the Exploratorium Museum in San Francisco, Isabel Hawkins, presented the website produced by the Smithsonian National Museum of the American Indian in Washington. Empezó el calendario de cuenta larga hace cuántos años? 5125 años. Era la fecha 11 de agosto, 3114 antes de Cristo. Astronómicamente, ¿qué pasaba en esa fecha? Orión, la constelación de Orión, que es el comal cósmico, estaba en el inframundo, directamente debajo. Directamente arriba, Doña María, ¿cómo estaba la sombra? Chaparrita, así circulito, paso cenital, el sol directamente arriba. Y la luna, llena. The website with versions in English and Spanish has its main objective to help and provide teachers at high school level an easy reference of the contents mentioned to relay this knowledge to new generations. You can check out the website at maya.nmai.si.edu. And before we close, I'd like to let you know that IndianCountryTV.com will be broadcasting live from the Menominee Reservation on New Year's Eve bringing you the Menominee New Year's Eve sobriety powwow. And that's another roundup of news from Indian Country on this edition of the Native News Update. I'd like to thank you for joining me and have a grand day.